Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. So I wanna share an end times dream with you that somebody else actually shared with me. So I don't do this very often. I do get emailed, um, you know, dreams and visions sometimes. I usually don't share them um, on my channel or publicly, um, but this one was a little different. And the reason why was because when I was walking into my office, to go sit down and read my emails before, as I was walking into my office, before I read this email, uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about what I was about to read um, and gave me an interpretation for it. So that was why this stood out to me. Um, I'm actually going to read uh, this dream um, that this woman sent to me. I believe she wants to remain anonymous, so I'm not going to share who it was. Um, but this is a dream um, that she had on uh, September 29th uh, of this year. I'm going to go, going to go ahead and read it uh, real quick. She says, I saw a giant full moon in the night sky. It was ivory in color and very illuminous. The moon hung over a vast field of wheat and there was complete silence. Albeit my spirit stirred within me as if to say, pay attention. As the dream focused closer on the moon, I saw a large wine glass fall and shatter against the top of it. The glass that fell was about the size of the moon and its content had the appearance of red wine. When the glass shattered, the wine ran down uh, the moon and covered it completely. Drops of wine formed a puddle on the field below, and the ground began to split. The dream followed the cracked trail until it stopped at the foot of a cross with Jesus crucified on it. So when I read this dream, I felt like the Holy Spirit gave me um, three specific interpretations for it. But I want to I want to share with you. Well, I'll wait until after I give you these uh, the first two, and then I'll share what he said to me before I read this dream. So the first interpretation I got these are these are three basically three indications that I received from the imagery um, that I felt like the Lord was uh, prompting me to share. So the first one was that the Bible talks about how before the end comes, the moon will be turned uh, red. It will be turned to blood. And so what I took away from that was. And, and I don't know if that's going to be a permanent change, you know, that we're going to see, or if that's going to be um, something that happens reoccurring uh, in the calendar. You know, there's so many different interpretations for that out there. But what I knew was in this stream that based on the moon being covered in this red color, uh, this wine, that this was an end times dream, that that's what this was referring to. So, so that was the first indication. Second one, the wine um, is probably referring to the new wine that Jesus talks about in the New Testament. Um, and, and so I'm going to actually combine the wine with the wheat. The wheat, uh, when I heard that, um, I felt like the Lord was reminding me of the harvest that Jesus talks about, how the fields are white for harvest. And so the wheat is probably, notice how I'm using the word probably for these two things, y'all, because sometimes I will get a sense or an indication about something the Lord is saying, other times he'll speak very specifically about it. So when I am uh, when I am like getting that indication or sense, that's I'm just gonna be honest about that, y'all. I'm not gonna try to say I'm 100% certain about something when I'm not. So that's why I'm saying that. So I I do believe that the wheat represents the harvest, though the new uh, converts who are coming into the kingdom of God, those who are responding to the message of the gospel um, in uh, the season that we're in in the end times, whether that is a short period of time after now or whether that you know, is referring to just the time period from when Jesus died on the cross till the end of time. You know, it could be referring to both. But the wine, in uh, what I believe it's referring to is, is the new covenant, and it is the Spirit of God that covers believers. You know, how the wine dripped in the dream drips off the moon onto the wheat, uh, onto the field. It's the Spirit of God that covers believers under the new covenant. And so, this lines up with scripture because scripture talks about how in the last days that God will pour forth his spirit on all mankind. You know, you know, your young men will uh, see visions, your old men will dream dreams. So there's, this is tied to uh, the prophetic as well. This is, and so that's the second indication I got that this was going to be tied to the first one was, this is the end times. Second one is that it's tied to the, the spirit of God being poured out on, on uh, believers on all mankind. This is the third indication I got. Um, and this is what I heard before I walked into my office was, as soon as I'm walking through the doorway, I heard the spirit of prophecy is what I heard. And, I, and it was very clear from the Holy Spirit. I was sat down, I started reading this email. And as soon as I read this email, I knew why I heard that. I went and I looked up this verse. It's Revelation 19.10. And it says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of, of prophecy. In the dream, what happens is, 
after this wine, you know, gets poured onto this field, a crack actually opens up and the dream follow the crack to the cross with Jesus being crucified on it. Prophecy, I think, believe so often today, and this is what I believe the Holy Spirit, this is the prophetic word that I believe he's giving through this dream that he wants me to share, is that we have made prophecy about things that it was not meant to be about. Prophecy at its base level, at its core, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is what Jesus has done for us on the cross. It is the gospel. If prophecy is not ultimately pointing back people back to the cross, unbelievers and believers alike, then somewhere along the line, we have missed it. We've messed it up. We've made it about something it's not meant to be about. And so especially in as, as you know, end times events occur, whenever that might be, now or in the future, you know, especially the, the further along in the timeline we get, and especially as God's spirit is being poured out on his people, I believe God is reminding the body of Christ and saying, look back to the cross, not just you're supposed to be pointing people, unbelievers to the cross, but we as believers need to keep looking back to the cross because as soon as we start, our eyes start going somewhere else and something else becomes the focus you know, other than what Jesus has done for us, then we're going to start, first off, interpreting things incorrectly, but also we're not going to be able to fulfill the purpose God has put us here to fulfill. And I just shared another video that with an end times dream I had that was very similar. It was all about the same idea, but I believe God is trying to really hit this nail on the head. You know, he is trying to hammer this in uh, firmly. I believe God is trying to point out the fact that as Christians, some of us, we have made, myself included, we have made the most important thing something that's political or economical or even personal. You know, the way that we feel, the way that other people make us feel. We've made some of these things the most important thing when the most important thing should be the gospel, should be what Jesus did for us at the cross. And I'm not saying those things are not important, but they're not the most important thing. Here's what I believe God is saying right now is that nations won't turn back to God until God's people turn back to the cross. Did you hear that? Nations won't turn back to God until God's people turn back to the cross. We want to make the answer, so so often we want to make the answer that we just need to get back to God's ways, you know, or God's values. But God didn't tell us to go throughout the whole world and push our values on people or to push God's ways on people. He told us to go throughout the whole world and preach the good news, to share the gospel with the world. The change doesn't happen, you know, when people when 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 people are forced to live under Christian values. That's a good thing. It's not a bad I mean, you know, not forcing, but you know what I mean. It's not a bad thing for God's values to be in our culture or society or government. That's a great thing. But that's not the thing that fixes the problem. What fixes the problem is the gospel. Every problem that is in our world today, the answer is the gospel. And if you don't believe that, this is what, I'm I'm not saying this to make you upset. I love you. God loves you. But but these are the two things that I believe God gave me this morning when I was praying about this. If, If that is hard for you to hear, if you don't believe that the answer is the gospel, there's one of two things happening. Either you haven't received the gospel yet. Either you haven't gotten it yet. You haven't fully understood it or you've received it, but now you're living under the weight of religion because when we are pushing religion off of other people and saying, you need to live this way, you know, this is going to, this is the fix. You need to become more like me. You need to live the way I'm living. Then what we're doing is we're taking the, the weighty religion that's in our own hearts and we're trying to push that off on other people, you know, and we're even justifying that being the focus in our own lives by by telling other people they need to live that way. But when when, when the gospel is is the answer, when the gospel is the focus, man, that's good news. Not just for other people, it's good news for us. So if you're in a place right now, I really feel like the Lord is wanting to get believers back to a place where we're not living under that weight anymore. You know, where we are we're walking in the freedom of, of Jesus. We're walking in the freedom. It says the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's freedom. God wants us to walk in that freedom. And when we're walking in that freedom, his love, man, the the message of the gospel is going to overflow out of our hearts. We're we're not going to be able to contain it. His love is going to be pouring out of us. We're going to be saying, let me tell you what God has done for me, you know, and he wants to do the same thing for you. That's that's what's going to be coming out of our hearts and our lives and our mouths. Not, you know, not, not the, the finger pointing, not the judgmentalism, but the love of God. And it's the love of God 
when, when you know, G, the Bible says that uh, through Jesus, grace and truth were revealed. People are not going to be able to accept the truth of God without the grace of God. You know, and when we try to push the truth of God off on people, but we're not living under grace and therefore we can't share that grace with others. Gosh, they're not going to be able to get it, y'all. They're not going to be able to receive it. But when we are fully living in the grace of God and we're filled with the Spirit and we are, we are trusting in what Jesus did for us on the cross, not, not in what we are able to do today, then we're going to be able to share that same thing with other people. So I feel led to pray for y'all just that we as believers would be fully acknowledging every day what Jesus did for us on the cross and that we would be putting our hope in that, not in anything that, you know, not in the way that we're living now or something like that. That's great. Yeah, when we get the gospel, when we believe that and we and Jesus um, it, um, changes our nature, then yeah, our actions do change. And that is part of the, that is part of what occurs. But that's not what saves us. Y'all, that's not what that's not what changed us. It wasn't our efforts. It was him. So I want to pray and I, I encourage you to pray along with me. Lord Jesus, I just ask God that you would uh, reveal right now your love to every person listening, not just your love, but your grace, Lord. Reveal what you did for us on the cross, Lord, even if we've gotten it before God, that you uh, would re-reveal it to us, Lord, that you would remind us of how good Jesus, your sacrifice on the cross really was. That you would remind us of everything you accomplished there. You said it is finished. And I just ask that you would fill every person listening with your Holy Spirit, Lord, right now, that they would begin to hear from you personally, God, that you would help us, God, that you would uh, build us up in our faith, Lord, that you would uh, give us the words to say when we're around other people, that you would uh, help us to know, whether it's through a word of knowledge, God, a prophetic word, or whether it's just giving us um, um, the attitude to have when we're around someone that you would help us to know how to present uh, the message of truth, God, and that you would give us the grace to present it in, in the right way, Lord, that we're not uh, compromising on the truth side of it, God, but we're also not, um, not, we're not sharing it in a way that is uh, lacking grace, Lord, that we're able to introduce people to Jesus Christ who revealed the truth and grace of God to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. I really hope this uh, was encouraging to you. So before I go, I actually want to share with y'all a cool resource. I recently released a, a uh, podcast. It's called My Prophetic Journal. And in this podcast, I share uh, some dreams and, and many visions um, and words that the Holy Spirit has spoken to me. Um, and I actually, the focus of the podcast is, is the gospel, is Jesus Christ, and it is an intimate personal relationship with him. Um, so I really believe that this podcast can be a really cool resource, especially if you feel like this word spoke to you today, um, because because what God has put on my heart in creating this podcast is is to really show the uh, the relationship between intimacy with Christ and, and the prophetic and how those things should go hand in hand. So I hope you go check it out. You can find a link to that on TroyBlackVideos.com uh, and you can find it on iTunes and Spotify and other uh, podcasting platforms as well. I love y'all so much and I'll see you next time.